Hi, welcome back. I can imagine that the last video left you a little bit confused because I was doing some magic here, just clicking fields together and suddenly everything worked. Maybe you were screaming at your computer screen again, like, ah, what's going on here? So in this video, we're really going to look at what exactly happened there. So we're not going to work with adding a new pivot table anymore. Actually, secretly, you didn't know that, but secretly we were working with Power Pivot. So let's go to the Power Pivot worksheet and manage our data. And what you see here, that Power Pivot has stored all that, all that data for us. The data that we have added to the data model, it's a little bit tricky. Actually, it should have said, add this data to a Power Pivot model, because Power Pivot is storing that data for us. And here you see the data in a diagram view. And if I click that link, you see that this is the link that I have actually created when I was clicking. Uh, I said, this is related to that. The beer is related to the name. So let's improve those names a little bit, because range and range one aren't good names. Let's rename them to register and beer, so they align with what is in our spreadsheet model. So now we have a view of our data. This allows us to do some more cool analyses. For instance, we would like to know what countries do the beers that are popular in our bar stem from. So do we drink US beers? Do we drink German beers, Dutch beers maybe, we want to know that. But in order to do that, we need to have some more information. We need to go to the brewery worksheet, because the brewery worksheet has the information of what brewery is in what country. So we're not going to make another pivot table. We don't need to do that to add it to the data model. You know that we were secretly working with Power Pivot, so we can say now, I want to add, go to the Power Pivot table ribbon, and add the data to the data model directly. So you see here, we get all the data in a similar way that we got it before. All the column headers are right there. We can immediately rename it to breweries, and then we can create a relation. We don't need to go to the pivot table where Excel says, ha, I need a relation, and then we create it. We can create it directly. We can say the brewery name in the beer worksheet is related to the name column in the brewery worksheet. And when we make that relation, we can use that to build our pivot tables on. So if you go to a pivot table now, you see that in addition to the register and the beers, we also have a list of breweries, and we can use that to make our country analysis. We can drag country in, and then we get the number of beers that we have sold for each of the countries. So what happens in the background is this country is linked to the beers through the brewery name, and th those beers are linked to the beer list, to the register log in the beer name. So Power Pivot traverses all those relations, secretly in the background makes something like a VLOOKUP to hold all the data in, and then you can build a pivot table right on top of that. We don't need to do the actual VLOOKUPs. If we add everything to the data model and create the relations, we can build a pivot table on top of that. So let's look at the data again. What is the traversal that we go through? We go from the register log via the name through the brewery, from the brewery name through the brewery, and then through the country. So that's the exact same traversal that I did, but now I did it in the data instead of in the data model. So that leaves us with this pivot table in which we can see what are the beers that we have sold for each of the countries. 